The first Data Futurology event for next year is going to be Ops World, data-centric operations for business value. We're going to be hosting the community in person at the Sofitel Wentworth in Sydney on March 14th and 15th. We're going to be discussing operationalizing securely for business value, impact and scale. What are we operationalizing? Everything across the data analytics and AI space. We're bringing all the ops perspectives together into this one event. So it's going to be data ops, operationalizing data pipelines, analytics ops, operationalizing our analytics, MLOps and AI ops about operationalizing machine learning and artificial intelligence in our businesses. We're going to be discussing processes, frameworks, the observability and the future of this space. Check out the website for more and hope to see you there. I'd like to say a big thank you to our sponsors, Talent Insights. Talent Insights are Australia's leading specialist data recruitment business. With offices in Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane, they're experts at providing recruitment strategy and building data teams for clients across industries Australia-wide. They provide recruitment solutions for all roles across the data lifecycle, including data engineering, data science, advanced analytics, customer and marketing insights, business intelligence, data product managers, and data governance. They're skilled at finding the best permanent and contract hires for your business needs, as well as statement of work, project focus, data resources. At Talent Insights, relationships matter most. I can say from first-hand experience, Talent Insights are fantastic to work with. Whether you're a business leader within an HR network or a specialist data candidate, Talent Insights should be the first company you turn to for all your data recruitment needs. Find them at talentinsights.com.au. Hi, this is Felipe Flores. Welcome to Data Futurology. Today, we're going to be speaking about AI regulation around the world. Over the past couple of years, there's been a lot of movement um, and discussion of around AI regulation and what should different, different countries do, how we should tackle regulation um, within, within a country and globally, and should it be a unified effort um, and even within the country, should it be a unified effort or should it be by industry vertical, et cetera? Lots, lots of questions, lots of models coming up in different countries and a lot of progress. Earlier, um, no, last week, I was, um, I was asked to present at a conference about um, AI and the progress of AI and a particular fo focus on AI regulation. So I thought I'd bring some of those thoughts um, to this discussion today. As a bit of a, um, um, a summary of, of what's been happening, I'll give you three perspectives, um, one from China, one from the uh, European Union, and one from the US about how they have been moving on the front of AI regulation. And then we can talk about uh, what, what could be done uh, in Australia and then keen to open it up to, um, to get your thoughts uh, as well. So <clears throat> surprisingly in China, they've taken the, uh, the lead in moving uh, AI regulations passed the proposal stage. In March 2022, China passed a regulation um, that governs companies and the use of AI, um, and uh, the regulations apply to online recommender systems, uh, and they say that uh, as well, I should say, and they say that the AI needs to be used in services uh, in ways that are moral, ethical, accountable, transparent, and that disseminate positive energy. So that's the, the, the approach um, from the, the Chinese government. They also say that the regulation, uh, well, the regulation says that they must notify users when an AI algorithm is playing a role in determining which information to display to them and give users the option to opt out of being targeted. Um, the, uh, the regulation also prohibits algorithms that use personal data to offer different prices to different consumers. Um, so really interesting that uh, China moved uh, early uh, um, on that front. Uh, interesting to see the, the, the scope. Um, and I've seen, um, uh, the, sorry, interesting to see the scope of the regulation. And I've seen other reports that have said uh, that um, companies are, also expected to submit their algorithms to the government uh, for review when uh, they're being used um, at scale. Uh, so um, really interesting approach uh, from, from China there. 
Meanwhile, in in the EU, they have uh, an overarching regulatory framework proposal titled the Artificial Intelligence Act, um, and they they've taken a, a an interesting approach where they separate the the ways that AI can be used into four bands, um, and they try to classify it by risk. So they have a band that's minimal risk, limited risk high risk, and then unacceptable risk. And the unacceptable risk um, covers things like uh, um, social surveillance uh, or population surveillance, uh, social credit scoring, uh, facial recognition, things like that are in the unacceptable risk category. And then um, high risk is is things like um, AI applied to critical infrastructures like transport, transport, um, educational or vocational training, uh, safety components of products, employment and management of workers, uh, essential private and public services, law enforcement, migration, um, administration of justice and democratic processes. So in those, in those cases, uh, the AI needs to meet uh, standards around um, transparency, uh, um, quality, high quality of data being um, uh, inputted into it, uh, appropriate human oversight, um, uh, security uh, and, and robustness, uh, things like that, that haven't been specified to the next uh, level of detail. And, and, I, and I think that there's definitely a space for, uh, for this to become better defined um, and, and for a bit more structure to, to come into that, that front. Um, but they've they've started with you know the four bands of classification, um, a description of what goes in there, how it should be treated, um, and then if we cover the other one, uh, which I think is good progress, I should say. So then if we cover the other ones, uh, limited risk is um, they have transparency obligations. Uh, so this is, for example, using a chatbot, and uh, the expectation there is that users should be aware when they're interacting with the machine, um, and then the uh, the minimal or no risk, which is the lowest category, includes uh, application and as AI-enabled video games, spam filters, uh, things like this. So the majority of the AI applications will fall into that space. Um, obviously, people are, are, are questioning and wondering how this will affect uh, innovation, progress, uh, applications. Um, and and there, there's always going to be a, a tension between the, the regulation um, and from, from a risk mitigation perspective and then innovation from, from a progress perspective. The other, the third um, perspective that I'll, that I'll show you, uh, that I'll discuss is uh, from the US that there's, it's been, um, I've, they've had a fragmented approach to AI regulation. Uh, so this, this means that at the, at the state level, uh, in the U.S., they can they can choose to uh, create AI uh, laws to regulate AI systems uh, around uh, particular focus around accountability and, tra and transparency when the systems are used and how the decisions have been made in the system. So a focus on explainability. Be besides that, or beyond that, at a national level, uh, the um, the U.S. Congress enacted a National AI Initiative Act. Um, so there, that is more focused around in improving research development and understanding um, AI within AI and having an AI strategy within the, the country. And then they have um, a pending legislation that is called the Algorithmic Accountability Act uh, that is from 2022, so this year. And um, that is... Um, let me see. So it's uh, to limit AI systems that can lead to bias and discriminatory outcomes. Um, then the idea is to empower the FTC to create reg regulations to mandate covered entities, including businesses that meet a certain criteria, to perform impact assessments when using automated decision making processes um, that would come out of um, AI and machine learning. So. A few, a few different approaches between um, China's, uh, which which has a, a, a quite a very a very high bar, um, Europe, which seems to 
uh, want to be working with uh, uh, companies and the practitioners in, in a way that, you know, it, it might be that the regulation creates certain requirements and that um, there, there, there is a space where they could have um, standards that align with the legislation, that the standards are, or the approaches um, are validated by third parties, almost like you would get, uh, companies would get information security certifications, then, and then it, it kind of feels like there could be a space in the EU to create that. Uh, something uh, a process similar to that, and then in the U.S., it seems like they're um, trying to to decide whether um, they should tackle AI regulation with one um, one regulation that applies as a as a blanket, so to everything that applies to everything, or whether they should go by areas or verticals. So these verticals sometimes it could be within a state. Um, otherwise, it could be by industry. Um, and um, those are kind of all different models to, to consider. Um, and then let's have a quick chat about what's, what's been happening in Australia. So in Australia at the moment, there is no uh, law that specifically uh, governs AI. What we have is um, ethical AI principles that the... Um, that the government uh, created and released. Um, I'll read those out to you. So this is a voluntary framework um, in terms of Australians' AI ethics principle. And the principles are, number one, uh, human society, societal and environmental well-being, um, so that AI should benefit all those. Second one is human-centered values. Third one is fairness. Then next, privacy, protection, and security. Then followed by reliability and safety. Then transparency and explainability. Um, second last, contestability. And last, accountability. So these are obviously very high level principles. Um, there is a lot of challenges in operationalizing those principles um, and 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 deciding how the rubber is going to uh, hit the road. So if we if we think about, um, you know, even the, the first one, um, human society, societal and environmental well-being, that um, the, somebody might say, well, creating, you know, complex AI takes uh, quite a toll from an environmental perspective. Does that mean that we shouldn't do that uh, in order to create, to train the, the AI? Uh, is that something that we shouldn't do? Um, or contestability, what's the expected level of explainability that um, is expected when an individual that has been uh, that has been affected by a decision taken by an AI contests that decision? And should a human review it only at that point that it has been contested, um, or should there be um, audits or, or reviews that happen before that? Um, so there, there's a lot of a lot of um, detail that can be provided there. But I think as a as a nation, we need to decide on our approach that whether do we want to take a, um, a uh, an approach that has a blanket regulation that applies to AI being used in uh, all areas uh, of, of life in Australia, <clears throat> or should we look into having um, different regulation by, say, industry vertical, um, I don't think we would go down this, the the state by state path. Um, I don't think the U.S. should do that either. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not the way that things happen in Australia. So um, yeah, in terms of the the way that that our, our regulatory system is structured, should should um, should AI be regulated at an industry level? And we think about like finance, telco, um, healthcare, retail. Um, should it be? done like that or should it be done uh, as an overall and then um, and then whichever ch path we choose then it's about creating regulation um, that you know could be um, in one end kind of like similar to the Chinese one on another end similar to a European one or we can have a completely different approach which might be um, uh, better suited towards uh, the towards Australian and the Australian expectations. And then once we have that, then it's about how do we and act on it? How do we operationalize it? And how do we help 
companies implement uh, the the um, the controls and the 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 processes in a way that's that's sustainable and uh, that is positive uh, that has a positive impact on the economy. So I think uh, all important things to to consider. But in saying all that, I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, so comment uh, below. Uh, let us know. What, how, how do you think Australia should regulate AI? Keen to hear your thoughts. Um, thanks for joining and um, see you next time. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope that you got a lot out of this discussion. And if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel um, so more people can find out about the challenges that leaders have in the analytics and AI space. And that's what we're trying to share in Data Futurology. Uh, so please like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed today's episode, uh, please tell your friends. Thank you so much.